Welcome to the SHUK Show. I'm Ron Moore, and guess who I'm with? Hey, All right. what's up? Share your beard. What are you doing? Um, I don't know. All right. Um, we eating beer. What you call it? Beer jerky? Deer jerky. Oh, deer jerky. Okay. Yeah, it's made out of real deer. <laughs> it's raw. You want some? No, thanks. No. Okay. I guess it'll make you a jerk. Ha! <laughs> right. Let's, okay. Let's talk about it. <laughs> okay, um, this show, as you know, is... The movie's 2004, and 2004 has some, in my opinion, some of the best movies that's ever came out, and, uh, right, um, so, if you don't want to be spoiled, look at the right of the video, the video description, if you don't want to be, I mean, I know the movies are old, but just in uh, case you were wanting to, it, right, in case you want to see, uh, those movies or whatever on DVD here real soon, uh, don't watch the show if you don't want to be spoiled on those movies listed to your right. All right. Uh, first movie we're gonna talk about. What are you talking about? Right. <laughs> I'm trying to go in chronological order. Uh, first one, along came Polly, starring Ben Stiller, Jennifer Aniston, and Deborah Messing, which came out January 16, 2004. Uh, this movie is just pretty crazy. It's a story. The story is about this guy named Ruben Pfeffer, who is played by Ben Stiller. Uh, he has a career in risk assessment. And he's kind of real pet peeve, make sure everything's organized or whatever. I guess he has obsessive compulsive disorder or whatever, I don't know. But um, it's crazy because he gets treated wrong. Like in, on his honeymoon, he gets dumped by his wife, who's played by Deborah Messing, who you may remember her from the show um, Will and Grace, uh, Remember's favorite show. Um, she cheated on him with a scuba instructor while they were on the honeymoon. He caught them having sex and... <laughs> It was just funny, like, that's just wrong how he got treated. Already cheated on him on their honeymoon. Then later on in the movie, he meets Polly Prince, who's played by Jennifer Aniston. Um, he ends up dating her, and he ends up doing a lot of things with her that he don't feel comfortable doing, but he does it anyway because he likes her so much, I guess. And the movie is, is, is pretty funny. It's a classic Ben Stiller movie. And speaking of Ben Stiller, how often... Uh, how many movies was he in in 2004? I mean, it seemed like he was in a bunch. 53. Huh. Uh, he was in Dawes Ball, Starsky and Hutch. After that, I think that's it. 53. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Along Came Polly is uh, a classic Ben Stiller movie. Um, my opinion is pretty pretty much underrated. Uh, I never got it on DVD. I guess I didn't like it that much to get it on DVD, but... I recommend you uh, rent it or buy it on DVD. It's, it's a pretty funny movie, especially if you're a fan of Ben Stiller. What do you got say, Red, about Along Came Holly or whatever? Yeah. Right. <laughs> nice, uh, nice shirt. Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> Cattle uh, Priest. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah. Um, I remember watching the movie. I can't tell you much more than Ronnie could. It's a movie. There you go. It's a movie. It's cool. It rocks. That's all you got to say about it. It was good. Now, this might be uh, real controversial. Uh, Passion of the Christ. Starring James Caviezel. If I said his name right? Yeah. I can't say most of these names right. That's on the format here. So, you know, if you don't like it, there's a door. Or there's a door right there. Uh, okay. Uh, Passion of the Christ. Um, this movie came out in 2004. Uh, February 25th to be exact, 2004. Uh, it, it was a lot of hype about it, a lot of talk. Is, uh, I don't know, I guess controversial, and, and uh, Christians and non-Christians were talking about it. Um, the movie is about you know, uh, Jesus Christ dying on the cross, uh, and the movie is directed by Mel Gibson, as all you probably know. Uh, very powerful movie. When it first came out, you know, again, there's a lot of talk about it. And uh, I even heard a story. I don't know if you heard about this, Raven. I heard a story of um, this woman. There's a bunch of stories of people watching it. What happened in theaters when people was watching it, I think. Mm -hmm. One of the stories I heard was uh, this woman had a heart attack and died in the theater while watching because she was so shocked about, by it, what happened or something. I don't know. Did you hear, happen to hear about that? No. This movie starts out in the last 12 hours in the life of Jesus on the day of his crucifixion. And... Uh, it opens up in the Garden of Olives where Jesus has gone to pray after the Last Supper. Uh, he's betrayed by Judas Iscariot. Uh, Jesus was uh, basically uh, convicted to die on the cross for 
um, speaking blasphemy or saying that he's God and all that stuff. So uh, the point of the movie, I think Mel Gibson's trying to get across was how much he suffered for it. We can read in the Bible, you know, and there's no pictures or anything in the Bible. He put a visual aspect to it. It's a visual he did. aspect. Uh, did he exaggerate on it? I don't know. He probably was around the money because... Probably. I mean, uh, the way they describe in the Bible, you know, uh, they didn't describe it to where uh, Mel Gibson did in the movie. But, you know, what Mel Gibson described it as, give us an idea how much he really suffered. And you don't probably don't realize how much he suffered until you actually watch the movie. So uh, that was really the point. You know, Gibson, I think, was trying to get across and everything. And, and uh, so, uh, if you're a Christian, you ha pretty much have to get it. Uh, if you're not a Christian, you might want to get it anyway. Uh, just see what people are talking about. And very interesting movie. Uh, what's your take on it, Raven? Or, yeah, right. yeah, he's just, uh, he's, he's the, uh, what, what, uh, what's his name? Andy, what's the guy's name? Conan O'Brien, his sidekick? Andy Warhol? No. That's an artist. Andy, uh, Andy Richter. Richter, that's right. Warhol. Warhol. <laughs> that's, a, that's, Andy Warhol. That's, a, that's an artist. But anyway, uh, this is Andy yeah, Richter over here. Uh, I'm Conan O'Brien. I do mainly the talk. He just sits over here and does nothing. So, uh, what do you do here? Uh, you really don't look like Raven. Your beard, just, you just look totally different. This <laughs> <laughs> evil twin. <laughs> right. But both of you oh, are Actually, no. I guess I'm his good twin. He has the mustache. Right. Both of y'all are evil. Uh, okay. <laughs> right. Next movie. Man, this movie's freaking hilarious. Starsky and Hutch. Uh, starring Ben Stiller, Owen Wilson, Vince Vaughn, and Snoop Dogg. Special appearances by the original Starsky and Hutch, David Soul and Michael Glaser or Glacier. Uh, Will Ferrell, Amy Smart, and Carmen Electra is also in the movie. It came out March 5th, 2004. I thought it came out February, but who am I to argue with? InternetMovieDatabase.com. Check it out. Uh, uh, IMDB, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, the story is, uh, well, the TV show, the original TV show took place in the 70s. Um, Starsky and Hutch, who's played by Ben Stiller and Owen Wilson, go undercover with Huggy Bear, who is played by Snoop Dogg in the movie. They go undercover to take down Bay City drug kingpin Reese Feldman, who's played by Vince Vaughn. The movie is just... Freaking hilarious, man. I mean, what do you got to say about it, Raven? It's gangster. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all, it's a gangster. good movie. Um, it just, I don't know. <laughs> you remember the part where uh, they were in towels in the locker room? and uh, they Unfortunately, were, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> well, no, it was just funny because Manetti goes, oh, by the way, those are hand towels. The big towels on the top shelf. And they were like wearing these hand towels around the waist and it looked um, creepy. But it was funny at the same time. And, uh, it, it, it was just creepy. Some of the show is creepy, but uh, what Ben Stiller movie isn't, I guess. Yeah, and, um, good point. When, when Will Ferrell uh, plays his uh, Big Earl, this uh, prisoner. Big Earl. Yeah, Big Earl. And uh, it, he was creepy, too. He, he loves to see guys' belly buttons. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, he, he likes Owen Wilson's oatmeal-looking belly button. That's what he I was describing. I'm eating, dude. <laughs> you know, he... You never eat oatmeal again, or <laughs> I, I don't even like oatmeal. Me either, especially after seeing that movie. Um, and another funny thing was they go undercover as these mimes, uh, and, and uh, Reese Feldman's uh, daughter's bar mitzvah, and uh, they're terrible moms to begin with. And uh, then they think they busted him. They thought Reese Feldman had the drugs or whatever hidden. Oh, wow, the cocaine in the movie is like non detectable. It looks like sugar sweetener or tastes like it. It tastes like it. And dogs, those police bloodhounds, or whatever they're called, they it, can't sniff it and detect it. Yeah, the, it smells like sugar to them, too. Yeah, and um, I'll get to that in a minute with uh, what Starsky did with that. But um, <laughs> they, they thought they busted Reese Feldman at his house, and then they shot through this garage door, and then uh, Starsky gives a lecture to all the kids. Let's be a lesson to you all. Now, everybody with a big house and money uh, are nice people, or whatever he said. He opened the door, there's a horse. And the horse fell down and died. And it was supposed to be a present to his daughter, uh, Reese Feldman's daughter. So, uh, yeah, th that was, like, messed up but funny at the same time. And then, right. Um, <laughs> speaking of, of someone that's on cocaine, no, uh, and the the sugar sweetener, whatever, the undercover cocaine, um, it, it cleared the police department. 
they did uh, forensics or whatever on it, so they couldn't detect this cocaine. So Starsky and Hutch took it home with them, and they were on this little this date with Amy Smart and Carmen, Carmen Electra, and then uh, they couldn't find sugar to make tea, and he used that uh, sugar that was used to, uh, that's supposed to be cocaine, but they thought it wasn't. So they put it in the tea, and then Starsky's oh, coffee. Coffee, whatever. I'm getting too. It probably is coffee. Yeah, um, and and Starsky just lit up the whole night, and it, it just funny how he acts, and he, he 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 saw this cartoon bird start flying around toward him, <laughs> and he went to this dancing contest. It just uh, which he would have won. He would have won, but he got screwed over, and he had a gun start shooting, not shooting people, but shooting up in the air, and he was it was he went crazy off that. It was just funny how his reaction. At first, when he first first uh, drank that coffee with the cocaine, or or, or it is cocaine, but um, <laughs> so I, and there's a lot of pretty much funny stuff in there. And there's one part where Reese Feldman slaps Snoop Dogg in the face. Uh, from what I heard in the commentary, that was not scripted. They just did that to him without telling him that. And Robin just said, "Cut." You know, Snoop Dogg was kind of pretty mad about it. I said, "What was that?" And they kind of calmed him down. I guess that's a as a rib on him. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to slap Snoop Dogg. You might get a cat busted in your butt. Uh, anything else you want to say about uh, Husky and Starch? If you have an iguana, put it in a terrarium. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess you shoot his tail off. Really yeah, they that. shot his tail off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they went in detail about that. That was pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, very classic movie. Classic movie. Um, okay, next... Dawn of the Dead. Starring Sarah Poli or Polly, Ving Rams, 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 Jake Weber and Mackay Pfeiffer. Uh, came out March 19, 2004. Um, it's a remake of a 70s version of Dawn of the Dead, I think, right? It's a remake of the George A. Romero version. Considering it wasn't you know, this one wasn't done by Romero. It was still really good. Yeah. And the director is also the same director that did the Scooby-Doo movies, unfortunately. Right. But, hey, go figure. Isn't the story of the movie, uh, there's no more room in hell, so the dead roam the earth, and they well, turn to zombies, and they bite other there's, people? There's that, and um, there's also, if you ever, if you watch it, they, uh, there's also... Uh, a clip where it shows a, a military guy talking and quit zooming in on it. There's a military guy talking and he's he gets a question from one of the media saying, um, is it true that this is a military you know, mistake? And he kind of has a pause and he's all like, I really can't answer that at this time. I, you know, he just stops right there. Yeah. And so... They're never really clear on that, so it could be a mistake made by the military, yeah, or yeah, the government, yeah, same thing. Yeah, um, I think the commercial said, "There's no more room in hell. The dead roam the earth." And then there's one part in the movie where this preacher was talking on TV, talking about, "There's no more room in hell because you want to commit fornication or drugs or whatever he's preaching about." All right, uh, <laughs> and so. And the zombies go around biting people, mm -hmm. and those who are bitten will eventually become zombies themselves. Yep. And uh, some some part of the movie is sad because of how certain people had to die, or that pregnant woman got bitten, and then she gave birth to the child who was the became a zombie. Baby. They had to shoot the baby, and uh, so yeah, it a pretty good horror movie. Pretty good uh, horror movies today, I guess you can kind of say aren't that good anymore like they were back in the day especially like Friday 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street uh, I think I never seen Saw or oh god or whatever but uh, from what I heard uh, those movies are I guess pretty good the first Saw movie came out in 2004 but as all the Saw movies were they sucked right so yeah they're not even going to be worth talking about in this it's 15 Saws I think no I don't know but, uh, 16, I think. Don the Dead is a pretty good movie. Uh, go ahead and check it out. Uh, oh, yeah, the ending. Um, I think they all die. They don't show them dying, but during the ending credits, they show the, this dog that was with them run toward 
for some reason the dog runs toward the zombies. I don't know why. I guess dogs are attracted to zombies. I don't know. And it's all food. Okay. And the zombies can't detect the dog or they see the dog but they don't want to eat the dog for some reason. It's too small. Yeah. And uh, so, and then at the end it showed all the zombies running toward the, that last group of people that was on the boat. And uh, it, then it kind of went back to the credits again. I mean, there's one part where they were on the roof and they were playing this shooting game. <laughs> the guys would hold up a sign saying, Jay Leno, and they would look for a guy that looked like Jay Leno and shoot him. And that was pretty fun. And then, like, eventually, the, like, one of the guys hold up the sign and gets bitten himself. And then he holds up a sign with blood on it. Yeah. And that was pretty creepy. It's pretty cool. Um, okay, next movie. Uh, Randall's going to hate this. Walking Tall. Starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Randall's favorite Hi. wrestler, Johnny Knoxville, and Neil McDonough. Don't know, whatever. Uh, came out April 2nd, 2004. This is a remake of uh, another remake from the 70s. Uh, the original Walking Tall is much better than this one. It's a true story. The 70s, uh, it's about a sheriff named Buford T. Pusser. Uh, however, this version is a little different. It's a total remake and different characters' names and all that stuff. Uh, after eight years of serving in the U.S. Army, Special Forces, uh, or Army and Special Forces, Sergeant Chris Vaughn, who's played by The Rock, returns to his hometown when his nephew Pete ODs on amphetamines sold by a security man at this casino. Uh, Chris Vaughn realizes that the town is dominated by mobsters and corrupt and a corrupt sheriff. So Chris goes crazy and beats up the mobsters, which is a pretty cool scene. After that, he's arrested and is tried in court. He gives a testimony about what happened and vows that if he is elected sheriff, that he... Uh, that he promises to clean up the town, so he is found innocent and becomes sheriff. And pretty good movie, and it's not just because The Rock is in it, and I'm a big fan of The Rock. I would have seen this anyway because I've seen the original Walking Tall in the 70s, which is pretty good, and I want to see the remake too. The only complaint I have about Walking Tall, the remake, is too short. I don't know exactly how long it is, but it's not that much over an hour long. And I remember in the theater, when it starts showing the credits, some people next to me was like, huh? That's it? It's over? What? It was too short. And it wasn't as dramatic and good as the original, the 70s version. But uh, I still think it's a pretty good movie. Randall hates it for one reason, though. I did not have relations with that woman. <laughs> right. um, I don't really have much to say about it. It was alright. Let's see. If The Rock wasn't in it, would you like it better? <laughs> it probably still suck. But <laughs> I don't know. Watch it once. It won't kill you. Yeah. It did me. <laughs> How are you still here talking? I'm a zombie. Right. <laughs> I'm gone the dead. Uh, um, okay, next, I'm going to let Raven talk to you about Hellboy. Which stars Ron Perlman and Selma Blair. Okay, while he's drinking, I'll announce that the movie came out April 2nd, 2004. Uh, <laughs> ultra awesome movie. Ultra awesome. And don't start zooming in on me. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, basically, the movie starts out. The American army is invading Poland, I believe. or They're invading an island right off of Poland because the Nazis are gathering there trying to pull something, some beast out of hell or something like that and um, something goes wrong and they Hellboy comes out of the portal which of course they didn't see at the time and you know after the uh, after the portal blows up they go around scouting the island to make sure there's no survivors and um, that's it no. yes that's it work game over <laughs> game over man right. um, speaking of game did they come out Hellboy video game you know, I do not know. Okay. Um, I thought you of all people would know. No. You're fired. Yes, okay. You're fired from the S2K show. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it turns out the doctor, while he's young, he finds Hellboy, you know, gets him to trust him, gives him a candy bar. I pay, I, I pay too much attention to detail in these movies. Um, you know, fast forward a couple of years later, um, 
Hellboy's old now. Well, not old, but he's in like his twenties or thirties. And he meets. Well, he he grew up with Selma Blair's character, and she controls fire. And I don't know. He's like in love with her, and I don't know. He eats chili and nachos. Right. That's not a joke. Um, <laughs> and uh, deer jerky? No. <laughs> He eats kittens and no, he loves kittens, oh, but right. he doesn't eat them. Um, that the bald guy, the Rasputin, at the beginning of the movie comes back. He's resurrected, and he goes after Hellboy, tries to get him to reopen the gates of hell so he can pull um, a demon god out of out of the sky or something like that. Get him to invade Earth and. Hellboy, like, just basically go, uh, goes in and kicks some ass. And, yeah, watch it. I mean, come on, you gotta watch it. The new one's coming out in a few months. Yeah, if you don't watch it, it'd be hell to pay. Oh. Okay. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I just can't help it. I gotta make kind of jokes every once in a while. Uh, okay, next. Shaun of the Dead. Starring Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. Which came out April 9th, 2004. British comedy. And it's a British comedy take on zombie movies. And apparently Dawn the Dead, I guess. Pretty much just making fun of that, yeah. <laughs> well, Sean is, um, he works for, uh, I guess he works for uh, some kind of grocery store or something. Um, it just starts out, he goes to, uh, he goes to a supermarket in the morning and picks up his juice or something like that. It's water. I don't know what the hell it is. But um, it's funny. On his way there, he sees a zombie walking, and he doesn't even pay attention to it walking there. He comes back. The zombie's still walking really slow. And I just turned yellow. And I would turn around. <laughs> um, his best friend shows up. And he's all like, hey, where's your brother at? And his brother's upstairs. And apparently his brother got bitten the night before when the zombie outbreak first hit. And um, his brother's a zombie, so they lock him upstairs. He's in the shower of all things. It's weird. Um, you know, it goes on later on. All the zombies are attacking and all that. They lock themselves in a... <laughs> and I knew you were going to bring that up here. I had to. Uh, right, go ahead. They lock themselves inside of a pub, and Ron Moore almost fell down. Yeah, um, I'll be tripping. No, but they lock themselves inside of a pub, start drinking, just eating and all that. Um, and I don't know, crap just hits the fan, and his best friend gets bitten by a zombie, and the, he becomes a zombie. It's weird uh, after the towards the end of the movie. Like, him and, him and his friends are sitting there playing a video game. His friend's still a zombie. He kind of, like, reaches over trying to bite him. <laughs> he hits him <laughs> on the arm, and he, he just sits straight back. And somebody's calling me on my phone. All right. You want to answer that? Yeah. Okay. We'll be right back. 